Welcome back, dreamers, to the Lucky Die. Previously, Laffian faces a room of Laffians. Growl loses his dream, Squash learns his limits, as Zoltana awakes to find her warlock and paladin. With all but one of the team getting their true names, Zoltana awakes to learn that Inverna has potentially discovered a base of the blissful eclipse. Now that Rao's nightmare has been eaten by Dendar and unrecoverable, Grunch recommends relying on Aima to know Rao's true name when called upon. Are the heroes ready for their first task? Will Aima know Rao's true name? And why would Daechin have visited with the Baranya when Squash was young? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome back to the Lucky Die. It's about four or five in the morning. You've had a long rest because of the dreams that you've all experienced recently. And the four of you find yourselves in the foyer of the temple um, beneath Thalsam. It's mostly just the four of you. Aima is skittering around somewhere. Um, Kythea is probably still asleep. Demi slash Grumps just disappeared off into wherever the hell they went. Damaz and Ninverna have taken upon their path of vengeance. Um... What do you four want to do? I think uh, Squash kind of wants to go uh, chat with Trample a little bit. But if the group has like a destination or an idea that they want to do right now, uh, Squash is of course going to sit on that a little bit. I think this is the last last break before we have to fuck off. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So if you need to use the bathroom before the trip, use it now. <laughs> Make sure that, that you moment. go to the bathroom before we go over to Kino. Once we're there, we don't know if they have bathrooms, and we can't read the signs. I could I, ask. Actually, that's not true. I can. <laughs> you, don't worry about it. We can't read the signs. That's a good one. All right. Uh, and I guess uh, we're like munching on some food or drinking some water or whatever, and Squash just kind of gets up and like, um, I, I, I have a couple of things I need to run by Trampow about magic, uh, so I'll be back in like... Oh, it takes like an hour to get to the surface. Three hours, I guess? Maybe two hours and 20 minutes, depending on how annoyed Trampal is this early in the morning. <laughs> Maybe you want to go sprinting then? Go uh, br- brief, um, no, not brief. Uh, brisk walk? Uh, brisk walk. All right. Power walk. Uh, That's the word. I'll try to be quick. Uh, I'll meet you guys back here, right? Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, um, squash- Squash, you might want to make sure that somebody knows your uh, true name before we depart, just in case, you know, all that. I don't know if you imparted that to anybody or not, but... My true name is Don Connolly. It is the name my parents gave me. I think I'm earning it as we go. Please just call me Squash now. I don't believe I've earned it yet. I'm working on it. Understandable. I I respect that as someone who's gone by a different name for a long time as well. I suggest you tell someone besides us who will be able to pull your ass out of the whatever the fuck it is we're going to do, though. Uh, we have no idea who's going to be there. I'm assuming we're going to tell people at the moment. Sorry, I thought you were just prying. <laughs> no, Sorry. no, no. I no, I I was not trying to pry. That's why I'm uh, I'm surprised that you told us. I. I didn't want to ask specifically. I just wanted to make sure that we all have our backup plans in place ahead of time because that's just the kind of person I am. Are they not teleporting people back and forth anymore like they used to? What? 
you know. I mean, there are some spellcasters here that might just be able to send you up to the surface. You'd have to ask them, though. To or from here, you know. Oh. Like they uh, used to. I, I could probably ask around. I'm, I'm assuming it's, uh, it was, it's a strenuous thing to do. I don't think they're just going to do it on a whim. Most of I them. mean, we're kind of important. They have so far just done it on whims. I think. <laughs> he's, he's not wrong. Does Squash know of any wizards down here that might be able to teleport him to the surface? You would have seen a fuck ton of people with magic. Uh, a fuck ton of them are down here. Right. Uh, so in the barracks themselves where y'all have been staying, a lot of the sick dragonborn are here. Um, basically, some people from Savras' army are still here. Most of them have transferred to the surface or gone to some of the kind of outposts that are being built around Falsum so everybody doesn't eat the same bloody food sources. Mm. Um, yeah, there are, there are people around. You could definitely just like meander into the barracks, see someone with magic and like, yo... <laughs> Alright, yeah, okay. I guess Squash is probably going to spend like 10 minutes finding somebody who's intended to go to the school in the next 20 minutes and like, hits a riot. <laughs> yeah, five in the morning, sure. <laughs> Somebody's got to do like an all-nighter, surely. <laughs> Someone coming back from the library and they're super tired. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can absolutely, um, like meandering into the barracks, like you can very easily see that some people are stirring and waking up. Um, yeah, you see, you see a lot of folks, some that you recognize, some that you don't. Um, you recognize that Kythea and Demi are kind of sitting together with a half elf. Nope, with an elven man who seems to be chatting very friendly with them. You can see that there are people near where Caden is sleeping and they seem to be stirring and getting ready. They also seem to have magics on them. Like, there are a bunch of people. If there's any short races, dwarf or halfling, I think Squash goes for those. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, actually... Very easy. Um, you come across a dwarf that you don't, that you wouldn't recognise, but we would recognise as Menmark N, um, who is a dwarven ambassador, and she very happily teleports you up to the surface. Um, no problem whatsoever. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. And she disappears. You don't remember their voice, do you? <laughs> she looks super tired. Like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Squash is going to try to figure out if Trample is awake, and if not, Squash is going to go wake him up. <clears throat> Just knock down the fucking door, drop a fireball. What's up, bitches? I got magic! <laughs> you said Boom! I have magic now! You said you teach me magic, right? Boom! Magic, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> no. Um, okay. Um, he's not awake. It is five in the morning, mm -hmm. um, but... Through a series of deductions and walking around, you know, finding a name that says Trempel's room, um, sort of his is not exactly next to like the head of the Witcher Society in Falsum, not next to that room, but on that sort of same floor. Um, yeah, you come across uh, Trempel's room and he and his companion are waking up, I guess. All right. If I hear some stirring on the other side of the door, then Squash is going to allow himself to just gently knock. Uh, he kind of, he opens the door. He looks really tired. Like, what? Hey, uh, I don't have a lot of time. We're going to Kino. I guess you better come in. <laughs> um, he kind of like awkwardly opens the door and steps back. Like he's barely dressed. Like he barely has a shirt on. He's not got a tie or anything yet. Um, yeah, his room is a complete mess. Um, the tabaxi friend that you've seen around him fairly often recently is also just kind of like getting up and gives you a wave as he gets dressed. Hey. Uh, hey, Trampo, um, sorry, I definitely should have done this yesterday before, uh, we did the whole dream thing, but I wasn't... What thing? Don't worry about sorry, it. Sorry, don't, don't, don't worry about it. We're, we're doing a whole thing. Um, it's got something to do with the Sentinels and the Gods and the, all the things. Okay. Let's, uh, let's roll it back. Take a, <laughs> take, take a seat. I, um... Thank you. I need a cup of coffee. Um... <laughs> And he kind of like goes over to one side of the room. There are like tables and chairs in here. It's very easy for you to find somewhere to sit down. And he comes back with like two cups of coffee. Um, his tabaxi friend just like gives you a wave and then slips out of the room. Uh, Squash like uh, grabs the cup and like, okay, let's just roll it back to where we were. I need help dealing with the whole avatar thing. Right. Yeah. 
okay, what do, what do you – I still don't know any more than that I, that I did before. What? I don't ha- – I'm getting stronger. I'm, I'm figuring magic out better. Um, earlier today, I actually managed to so make, I can my, see. make myself smaller. Uh, and I assume that if I reverse basically just the kind of the, the strangeness of it, it's just going to make me bigger. Um, yep. But I can't, there is no way for me to gain the power that I would need. It's, it's, it's levels way beyond anything I could possibly hope to steal from the world. Uh, I need to perform what I assume is a kind of a banishment or an exorcism to. I don't, I don't. I don't want to know the specifics. If I do, I ain't getting a lot of trouble. Just I need to know how to cast a spell that I shouldn't be able to. You see him look down at his hand, the one that he had like cut so that he could do sending. Um, you can see it's pretty well healed now. It's kind of back to most of its functionality. And he, he looks down at the table and he says, I did promise to help you <sighs> fuck all right all right and he he goes off um and he comes back with a couple of blank pieces of parchment he pulls out a very small like dagger and he just cuts his thumb and you saw him you see him draw a rune on this one of the blank pieces of parchment it's a really intricate rune it's very delicate and there are lots of very subtle moves in it and he talks you very slowly through what each of them means so you understand how to draw the power into it and then he just draws a very simple question mark next to it and he says when you do that takes about a minute I know it's taken me like 10 minutes to explain it to you but should only take about a minute basically you just say grant me this wish I seek an audience with Klemdal. Um, she'll probably bargain with you, but it does take some magic to do it, so you can't be out of spells. Okay, I'll be out of energy. You think this rune is something I can cast? Yeah, looking at the magic on you, yeah, just, but yeah, squash. Look, mate. You can only cast this once. I know. I mean, that's literally it, just once. Trampo, you do know that your one time was in the service of something very great. I lo- I'm, I'm not even bothered about that. I never even planned on using it. I never thought I would need to, so she's nice. That's why I want Don't worry you... About that's why I need you to understand that we didn't throw yours away. Uh... You don't need to explain it, all right? It's done, it's done. And I'm fine with it. Are you not mad at us? I can see your hand is still stiff. <laughs> done worse. <laughs> there was one time I fell out a window casting a spell. Now that now that was some lasting damage, my friend. So, no, I worry about it. I never thought I'd have to use it. Most people don't. So, I know it's done for a good thing. Don't run it. Thank you, Trampal. Guess you're welcome. Don't pester me again. Squash. He kind of like has half a smile on his face. <laughs> Squash like rummages around in his head. He's like, I think you should be free of me for a very long time. Um, but if you ever need anything, just... Let us know. I know things suck right now. Um, the new uh, chain of command isn't exactly interesting from what I gather. Oh, she's she's a piece of work, mate. Bloody hell, I thought it was bad enough. I think Demi in charge. Whew. This one's like 100% opposite. It's chaos and order, Blimey. isn't it? Just order. Nothing but paperwork. Fuck me. Anyway. Right, right. You get on doing what you do. The less I know about it, the better, right? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, Squash kind of gets up and I think he tries to steal the piece of paper that he wrote on. 
Like, not steal, but take it if he doesn't stop Squash. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, he does explain to you that if you're casting it, it needs to be your blood, not his. I, I like, understand, as part but the... I'm assuming Squash doesn't, uh, doesn't have a photographic memory, and he's seen this now <laughs> once for ten minutes. Okay, all right, sure. Um, um, I'm just going to say yes because your sleight of hand, sneaky uh, bullshit, is going to uh, be way above anything no, that Trump no, no, would hope to hit. You're misunderstanding me. I use the phrase "steal" very liberally in my day-to-day life. What I meant to say is, I'm assuming Squash takes the piece of paper with Trampal's permission. Yes. Yeah, he, he won't have any objections to that. Squash just kind of rolls it up and uh, gets, uh, uh, like, just opens the door and lets himself out. And just before he closes the door, he just goes, We owe you one. Or at least I do. Sorry for waking you up. Yep. I was awake. Um, he closes the door behind him and he, he basically makes his way towards like the new head of the Witcher Society and very quietly like taps on the door. He has a cup of coffee in his hand. Uh, you hear her like, enter, and he goes in and starts working. Yeah, boy. All right. Uh, and Squash is going to fuck off back downstairs. Cool. What's everyone else downstairs doing? Mm, I think Rawls going to check on the Dragonborns. And that's about it. Nothing specific. They're basically, they're basically asleep. Last yesterday was a fun party day, and there was lots of dancing and excitement. And now they're kind of they're not exactly suffering for it, but they are very tired. Um, you can see that there are scorch marks and frost marks, and like um, some slight acid damage just all over the place. But they seem to be coping, and they're talking to each other. Those that are awake, um, it's a happy atmosphere, even if it's a slightly pained one. They seem to be doing okay. That's good. Roll for hangovers. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> Roll 20 D20s, B. <laughs> Wait, how many did we get? A baker's dozen? <laughs> 13. <laughs> 13. Almost. Dirty baker's dozen. Yeah, 13. They, they seem to be doing okay. Like, all things considered, um, they're doing okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Did they write down uh, their I, things yet? Their things... Uh, oh, right. The things they want to do for their future, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, some of them have written, some of them have done their homework, like good students, and some people are still just like, what? Homework today? Shit. Uh. <laughs> some of them have done their some homework. Them... Some of them have a hangover. <laughs> like, I think there's they're... a clean <laughs> line between those two. <laughs> when Raw comes back, if there's any missing, like, you know, he'll get the remaining. But if there's any that are ready, yeah. he'll take them with him so that he can, like, think about them. Yeah, there's there's a couple of them that want to be um, fighters. A couple of them want to be sailors. Oh, big surprise. Um, one or two of them fighters. want to be, huh? <laughs> big yeah, surprise, fighters and fighters. sailors. Um, and a couple of them want to be like herbalists or doctors or alchemists. Um, hmm. They want to learn how to heal or how to create potions. Um, there is a good variety, and of course there are because younglings, a couple of them are that are missing, <laughs> yeah. and they promise in their sleepy state that they will write them down. But maybe tomorrow when they're <laughs> Slightly less tired. <laughs> Do we have a drinking age? What's the drinking age here? Uh, I refuse to comment. Uh, appropriate to age and size, I guess. So then question, is Talus old enough to drink? Technically. <laughs> but no. Uh, she's eight years old. <laughs> is she? Yeah, sorry. So just... She's eight. <laughs> Caden will not let her drink. Eight. Teen. And she's too busy playing Strife Hammer 4000 or whatever the fuck it's called. So. <laughs> Strife. Right. What did we say mallet. was a Strife Hammer? Strife f- Mallet. Strife Mallet, strife mallet. 3000. Thank you very much. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Strife Mallet 4, 5, 6, or 10,000. It just depends on the points of the value of the army on the Strife Some Mallet. Some tabletop anyway, game out there um, somewhere. Please contact us so that we can get this patented. No. <laughs> no please don't. I can't deal with this. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Lafian, is there anything that you want to do while Squash is fucking around upstairs? I want to talk to Kaifia. Okay. Uh, she is currently like sitting cross-legged on her bed. She's chatting with Demi and with a 
an elven male that you've never met before. He's got long, um, like darkish hair. He has like really flashing blue eyes. Um, he has that really like chiseled jaw. Um, like think of uh, the dude from The Witcher. He can't. I'm gonna go with that. He kind of looks like the dude from, uh, Gerald from Witcher, except that he has dark hair and blue eyes. Um, and yeah, he's well built, and he is also carrying a loot. Um, so the three of them are just kind of chatting on the bed. This man both intrigues and terrifies me. <laughs> Do you feel threatened? Yes, not in a not in like a romantic way, just in a like this guy could probably fucking kill me with that loot way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is he ripped? He Does he have stacked. muscles? He is ripped. Yeah, he is ripped. Oh god. Um, okay. You can see every one of his eight abs. I don't know how many abs you have. I think it's a six pack. So I'm having eight. <laughs> like he looks buff as shit. Like yeah. Laffian just approaches and like just kind of stands there for a moment until someone acknowledges his presence because he doesn't want to interrupt. Uh, Kythea uh, spots you first. Um, the other two kind of, they know exactly their backs to you, but like they're not exactly looking your direction. And she kind of looks up at you and smiles. She says, hi, um, come, come join us. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing wonderfully now. Um, now that I'm a little bit more awake, um, he just sits down next to her, like right next to her, so that like their knees are like just touching and whatnot, and he's <laughs> asserting your dominance. <laughs> no, he being he being affectionate. <laughs> um, uh, the 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 elf kind of looks over and he he like offers you a hand and says, "Hi, my name's Jan Daril." I'm sorry, if one were to spell that, how the fuck would one spell that? Uh, J A N D A R I L. Jan Daryl. I noticed this is specifically not an apostrophe in there. I'm very confused. Sorry, I forgot to add the apostrophe. It's between the N and the D. Okay, there we go. All right, that makes... Whew. Speaking a whole different I language there. I paused so I could add the apostrophe in, but I forgot to say the word apostrophe. <laughs> um, pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, Laffian Daphthro, dear. Gives a hearty handshake back. Oh, yes, yeah. Prince back from the dead. How wonderful. Ugh, nobody told me you were a hunk. Thank you. It's very early for this, but thank you. Most welcome, most welcome. I've been up for a few hours, been traveling, just got here myself. Uh, well, I guess I shall... Well, come on, Demetria, let's, uh, let's fuck off and leave these two lovebirds to it, shall we? And he kind of gets up and grabs her by the shoulder and she's like, um, uh, okay, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, and the two of them just fuck off. No, never mind. I don't need to worry. Squash needs to worry. <laughs> I don't, I don't think they're together. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> did you sleep all right? Yeah, um, I got woken up a little while ago by some explosions and lots of talking, and I thought, oh, I'm just going to wake up. <laughs> so it's okay. Explosions? I don't... Um, oh, Demi yes, there was... said she was showing Squash how to do Fireball, and she apologized for waking me up. Okay. Wait, Squash knows Fireball now? Oh, no. Okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's we're gonna have to have a conversation. Okay. I, th- I think leave him to it on the magic. He's he's learning the same way that we all learned the pro- whatever it is we have to go through. The, the concern is not that he's learning magic. The concern is that he's not learning the when and where. He's just learning the how. As someone who had to very distinctly learn the when and where part of using abilities. It's a big concern, especially when half the time, the two people that are in range of the fireball are Rawl and Zoltana. <laughs> He's your friend. I, I can possibly comment on him. Well, my friends are your friends, and your friends are my friend. Do you have friends back home? We've never talked about that much. I do. Um, that was a really, yeah, I do. Um, most of the people come from the assembly, at least the friends that I really have. And I have a brother. I remember you mentioning him. He's, he's not so great, though. <laughs> uh, They're not they hanging out in the desert day, by chance, but... right? None of them are hanging out in, in a desert in the middle of nowhere? Lafian, I, 
I haven't been home for like five years other than kind of just about now going to Shilvana, which is the place I came from. Um, no, and that's on that's on a town. That's on a that's on a coast. It's not um, in the desert. Okay, all right. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't. Okay, d- d- regardless, um, we're going to be leaving soon. I wanted to make sure that. At least somebody had my real name, my true name. And uh, oh, that yeah, they said that you were doing that. Um, did it go okay? Did you get what you needed? I did. I. It was a very peculiar dream, and um, you ended up being in it and ended up helping me find my true name. She kind of, she smiles and you can see that she's not, she's kind of blushing a little bit. She doesn't really know why, but yeah, she's kind of blushing a little. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad I helped you, even if it was just a dream version of me. <laughs> Do you need to talk about it? You said it's peculiar. Well, I suppose now is as good a time as any because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. And for all I know, I'm going to kick the bucket, so. No, don't. Please don't talk about that. I, I can't. Sorry. I trying to keep things well, regardless. Um I had been thinking on an idea for a long time after our last discussion about um staying out of politics and things for a while and making the most of our time yeah. together. I I had an idea that I thought would be something nice that you and I can do together. I had been thinking for a while um, between the fact that both myself and or between the fact that you and myself both have psionic abilities to one extent or another and you've got your alchemy and we both have a lot of knowledge on many subjects. Um, I thought it would be something that we could do where we could start a school together for many different subjects and try to teach psionics and see if we can pass that along to others, expand the worlds and add to it with our own, our own understanding of things. And to that extent, when we went, up north, I, I found a place where we could do that. Um, there was the, I can't even call it a port city anymore. It's kind of very far inland now, but the place called uh, Kofor and Bayad. And there was a school, like a whole big school there. And it, it was kind of in disrepair, but I, I thought it would be the perfect place for us to be able to go and, and, settle down and be able to to have this whole big school where we can teach people and spend our time together and turn this this rundown she city reaches into... out and puts her hands like over both of yours and she just kind of looks you squarely in the eyes and she has like this big smile on her face and she says yes i would love to i have so much to teach and there are abilities that i have that i don't understand yet and I, I don't know if I ever will, <laughs> but I'd love to see if we could pass what we know on to other people. And I, I just want to say thank you. I, I know it's not easy for you to want to give up being a politician for me, but I, I really don't want to do that. And thank you for this. He just leans over and gives her a kiss. She obviously kisses you back. <laughs> to cut things short on that, I um, the dream I had was of myself being at this city, and it was large and extravagant, and there were new buildings and wings of all sorts of institutions building up everywhere, and I was old. And I had to go teach a class. 
<laughs> but then it turns out the class was really me teaching myself what my true name was, but I was struggling until you appeared, which was peculiar considering I was very old. Well, I am very wise. Your wisdom you transcends your age. <laughs> Flatterer. I try. Um, he's gonna he like looks around to make sure nobody else is like listening in. Uh, take a perception check. Oh fuck! This is not something he wants other people hearing. Twelve. Never mind. So far as you know, nobody is close enough to be listening, or they're too busy, or whatever. Okay. <laughs> what am I doing? I have fucking telepathy. <laughs> Uh, I'm not awake yet. <laughs> fucking cut that shit out. Neil, just cut that whole fucking part out. Literally irrelevant when I can talk into people's and fucking you minds. never did. <laughs> I'm out of it right now. Telepathically. A, uh, no. Uh, all right. Let me. It's center. not a real name if you don't use your mouth meat flaps to make the sound. <laughs> I use my Others. brain meat flaps to make the sound. It's not Girl, the stop same. It meat needs to flaps. be wet. Stop saying meat flaps. Are you saying your brain is not wet? No, it's dry as fuck and smooth. Smooth. <laughs> smooth brain. <laughs> this is the worst conversation we've ever had on this uh, I agree. Is I'm it? sorry. Thank I'm you, sorry. Casey. I agree. <laughs> my, my brain is <laughs> dying right now. <laughs> I... <laughs> I haven't had enough coffee to handle whatever the fuck is happening right now, and I've been up a lot longer than Arch has. Neil, don't edit that part out. Leave that in. Mm-hmm. No. Please, no. no. Please, please don't. All right. Please, God, no. Um, telepathically to Kathy, he says, my true name is Lafin Lassadar. It's a bit of a crude translation, but essentially in Elvish it means Moon Lord the Unifier. That's the Let's see what's here. That's the proper translation. She's responding telepathically, she's not right. like <laughs> saying this out loud. <laughs> it um the raw translation would be Moon Lord the Worldbinder, but uh that that's kind of not that sounds a little more aggressive. You'll make it what what it needs to be. I mean, it is your name, and you're not aggressive, are you? Not unless you're a bad person. <laughs> well, I'll try not to be. She kind of has like a smile on her face. Not going to make it lewd. Not going to make it lewd. Not going to make it lewd. Stop it. Stop it. <clears throat> um... <laughs> I would appreciate if you don't mention the Moon Lord part to anybody. That uh, I'm not. It's yeah. My lips are sealed. It doesn't go any further than me. I promise. My parents were dreamers uh, when they named me that. Something about being able so to I, rule the rule the world and then the moon or something. I don't. <laughs> so I guess that's what I need to do to get you unstuck. If you get stuck, huh? If I get stuck, you have to do something with magic or something with that name. I don't know. I don't even know what would happen if you said the full name out loud. I don't know if I would vanish from existence or... <laughs> I I don't understand how most of this true name stuff works. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> Piers next Same to Roll. name, I. true name three times, they appear next to you. Um, I don't... I don't know... Um, from the little that I've read up since we we spoke about it, uh, it's kind of random. Um, it can do different things, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it always requires some sort of magic. I'm going to hope that it works for what we need if we need it. I'd rather we didn't need it, but... Well, then I guess I'll just have to survive absolute minimum until I can... Until I'm needed. Minimum, you're going to survive for a damn long time so that we can open that fucking school. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to find good real estate these days? 
<laughs> Two continents, exactly the same. <laughs> you can't even teleport there. You can't even teleport. It's a whole thing to get there. Maybe we should figure out how to make that more accessible to people. <laughs> no, no, no. See, because the thing, I, the idea I had was, if you're really <laughs> worthy of the teachings, you have to get there yourself. Fuck it's kind of like God. a rite of passage. <laughs> Yeah, but I think maybe we should have ways of getting people there because not everybody is going to be gifted the same way that you are. I, I can't teleport there. Oh, I can't teleport I don't have either. That I'd, kind of. I slammed into a wall. We we almost <laughs> fell in. It hurt. Just... <laughs> okay, so tell me everything that I've missed. Okay. Um, insert all the episodes. I guess. <laughs> yep. It, okay. Great. Insert Fantastic. Well, everything. <laughs> We'll leave you two talking for a while then. Okay, brilliant. No. Um, okay, Zoltana, is there anything that you would like to do? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I was very hype. I was like, ooh, this is going to be a moment where he's like, well, I may not come back, so I better I better lock this down just in case. No, that's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> I'm putting a ring on this right the fuck now. Um, no. <laughs> no, that's like romantic. That's like the, that's like the, the like, you know, the, the, dedication of true love being like i i might not come back from this so i want i you it's know. what the first half of armageddon was it's what, like <laughs> the if the rest of my life is going to be three hours i want to spend it with you and then immediately goes off to the other planes of existence <laughs> <laughs> yeah he so but to be fair when you get to a certain point in series someone has to say will you marry me even if you get slapped in the face for it i'll so get there someone just not it. now I think he needs to do it now so she doesn't have to worry about him getting seduced some, by some badass demon pussy. That's not going to fucking... I want to know. Maybe he should ask her in case I, she gets seduced by a really okay. buff-looking elf. Anyways. Uh, I, just really, I just really hate all the things that are coming out of Aether's mouth today. <laughs> not, I'm, not, I'm not here for any of the things that he's... The, the phrases he's saying. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very... I'm, I'm, I'm very against everything that's been happening. Here. I'm sorry. <laughs> this day. I'm not actually sorry, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I can't believe you've made me have to listen to brain, brain beat flaps and badass demon pussy with my own two ears. <laughs> this is this is this is just this is what makes uh, me quit the podcast. No, I'm just thank, kidding. I would never quit the podcast. Thank you for showing up early for our recording <laughs> session, Casey. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> Fucking hell. Okay. <laughs> Sultana, is there anything that you want to do while everyone is off doing whatever the fuck it is that they're doing? Um, Ninverna and Damas, who were kind of chatting with you previously, have gone off in their kind of pursuit of vengeance slash finding more information about the Blissful Eclipse cult. Um, is there anything in particular that you want to do? No. <laughs> okay. Then what? are you gonna do <laughs> um chill i really don't know what zoltana's doing i get like she she had a dream she went off she uh -huh. talked she's got a she got a uh herald um now yep. she's just chilling Re right. reading a book Sweet. maybe i don't know she's like she went to like the the library and and, and took out a book about like the, the history of of war on the continent or something like that and she's like reading up on <laughs> military strategy Oh, I like it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, huh. Who would have books on military shit down here? Let's say that Damas left some of his shit behind and there would definitely be like books and shit on military strategy for sure. Um, like he probably would have left a bag with Demi and she probably would just thrown it somewhere on the floor. So it's very easy to come across those kind of books. If you read that again, I will give you something for it for sure. Just remember that you have it or write it down somewhere. I love it. Okay. I will I will write down on my character sheet, which I definitely have opened and haven't forgotten to do at all. Um, but I have a book on military strategy. Sultana, as you are in the foyer, kind of like reading this book that you managed to find, um, you notice that this really buff looking heart, um, elf with a loot on his back is kind of like making his way over towards you. Uh Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Sultana, right? And he kind of like sits down like awkwardly close next to you. I'm going to like scooch away and be like, that's what they call me. 
Right, you're friends with Squash, and I'm sorry, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Jan Dariel. Okay, yeah. Um, so I just want to let you know, it's really weird to come up to somebody, sit like right up in their personal bubble and tell them you know who all their friends are. If you weren't talking to me and you're talking to someone like maybe a little less mentally stable, um, you might get murdered for that. <laughs> so, you know, like just, just maybe introduce yourself before you go into like a detailed personal history about the person that you don't can know we, can we do you mind if we like restart this i'm awfully sorry i've not been around a lot of people for a couple of weeks and i am very socially deprived i'm awfully sorry do you mind if we start again can i can i back up and would you mind uh yeah sure just like also kind of like back up a little bit in the chair <laughs> just, a, just a little bit um you see you he see gets this up. this is my she like reaches out her arm and she's like this is my bubble and and <laughs> i don't know you so you can't be in this bubble or you'll get punched in the face that's that's just me right. <laughs> he gets up he walks away he turns around and walks back and he stands at the very edge of your bubble <laughs> that you've indicated with your arm. Good. And he's like, hi, I'm John Dario. Hi. Nice to meet you. What do you want? You're Zoltana, right? Yes, I am Zoltana. Great, great, wonderful. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I'm a friend of uh, Emil and the Burke and Sorens and, and Demetria. Um, I just want to say hello. Um see how you're doing i understand that you're about to go do some big ass task uh yes some kind of big ass task indeed i was just wondering if you if there's anything i can do um so and he kind of like sits down cross-legged in front of you not like at, again at the edge of your bubble <laughs> <laughs> just down cross-legged he puts like the loot on his lap and he's like well you see i I'm a bard. Um, I work with the others on the thing that we're doing. Um, and our goal right now is to help the four of you do the things that you need to do. So I was wondering if there is perhaps anything I can do to help you at all. Um, I can help train with you before you go do whatever task you're doing. I can uh, perhaps uh, soothe your soul with some music and give you some inspiration. I'm just wondering if there's anything I can do to help. Um, I'm kind like of a bit of a loose end. I've done my task now. Well, one of my many tasks. I do like music. Yeah, like I could I could I could use some some soul soothing. I feel like you know who could probably use some soul soothing is like all of us. Why don't you like you could like put on a concert for us if you want. Yes. How about I compose something like right now? Um and I'll, I'll sit here and wait. And then when everyone else turns up, I'll play a little bit of music for them. And then um Demetra can take you four away to wherever it is that you need to go either. Um and he very quietly says and mouths like the words Kino and Belligbood and uh, Cicero. Sure. Can Whichever I have one of these you're going to? Can I make a request in the song, can you make me sound like the most heroic of everybody? <laughs> oh, darling, you are the most heroic of everyone. Look at you. Look at those sick gains. Damn right. just indicates all of you. <laughs> she, she like she starts flexing her her like biceps. And she's like, damn right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's like, well, of course. Um, what is your routine? And he just kind of like looks at you and like looks at his arms. He's again well built, so he clearly doesn't need routine hints. He's just asking. Sure. So the first thing you got to do is you got to lift a lot of stuff and then put that stuff back down, right? Um, but you like you want to work up to lifting like bigger and bigger things. Um, so like when I was on the road with uh, my you know, my, my friends, um, before these friends, when I was, when I was part of the Irregulars, um, you know, like, uh, Elise is like about the same size as me. So I ended up like eventually like picking up Elise and putting her down as like, you know, my, uh, my routine mm -hmm. for my arms. And, uh, now I just, <laughs> you know, kind of like punch my pack. Um, I like kind of like suspend it and, and, and punch it. Um, as a mm -hmm. good way to like keep my my exercise up. Also, like swinging around <laughs> a giant sword like I have kind of keeps your arm muscles really good. Um, with legs, I do uh, it's, some running. It's, 
You're clearly killing it, darling. Uh, I mean, look at you. Um, as as he says that, you can see that the loot strings are beginning to kind of play themselves. Uh, you can see there's magic going off. Uh, you would assume probably Mei Chand is playing the loot as he's doing this. And it's like, you're clearly killing it. Um, you look absolutely divine, which is funny. Well, not funny. It's obvious. Um, you are. Um, oh, this is wonderful. Okay, tears are regulars. Yes, I think I know a bit about them. Uh, that's great. Oh, this is wonderful. Um Thank you for talking with me. I, I'm I'm sorry about the awkward introduction. It's been a while. No, you know, it's okay. I just, I'm like, it, it was a little bit off-putting that you came up, sat like right next to me and then immediately told me who my friends were. It, it Usually I'm not like this kind of like, I don't know, like severe. No. Nope. But uh, it was very off putting for me. But I, I, get- I, I totally understand. It is absolutely my bad. I am very sorry. And my own mm, solitude and strangeness of the last few weeks is, is no real excuse. Um, please well, uh, accept my apology. You have no requirements to do so, though. No, I accept it and I forgive you. Uh, he, he smiles and the tune becomes a little happier. <laughs> <laughs> when he's playing on the loot, <laughs> becomes a little bit better. Um, all right, cool. Um, I'm going to say probably at this point, um, Squash, you could probably very easily find another mage that could send you back downstairs who understands the situation. Everybody here basically does. Um, and you can uh, get teleported back down pretty quickly. Um, everyone is beginning to wake up properly now. There's a lot of talk and a lot of chatter going on. Um there doesn't seem to be any extra food. There's no breakfast laid out. So it would have been whatever rations that y'all had is basically what you would have to have eaten. So if you have ration packs written down, please write at least one of those off for the morning if you intend on eating. And the four of you can meet back up. Um, Raoul, most of your, most of the baker's dozen have given you something <laughs> except one who is just stubbornly holding out and just like, I will give it to you tomorrow, man. <laughs> Like, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. I just don't want to do it right now. Um, I'm undecided, okay? Uh, like, you have one of them as very fiercely not wanting to fill something out. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, Rawls shows patience. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, and all of you can meet back up. Uh, Kythea joins you. Um, Ama joins you. When Ama joined me? Yeah, Ama's still around. Um, and, uh, like, you know, anyone who you want around you when you meet back up is entirely up to you. Um, Go right ahead. Are we leaving? I guess so, then. Um, unless there's anything else we need to do here, then I think it best that we start... I don't want to say getting on the road. Uh, getting on the teleport? It doesn't sound yeah. quite as right, but... <laughs> don't we need Demi? We need Demi for this. Oh, uh, she's flittering around in the background. Like, she's pretty close. She's chatting with, like, Emil in the book. You say flittering, and all I could picture is just Demi hovering like a foot off the ground and like some fucking like big ass fairy <laughs> wings sticking out. <laughs> Not today. That's a different incarnation of wild magic. Uh, no. Uh, she's she's chatting with the book and Soren. Um, the uh, Jandariel is kind of still sitting near Zoltana and talking a lot, and you can see that they're playing the loot um, just laid out beside them. And it's really chill and soul soothing as requested and you can hear that he's beginning to work on lyrics um like things like swole have been mentioned uh sick gains uh how this is going to work into a soul soothing song you don't understand but he seems to be working on it <laughs> what <laughs> listen being told that i have large muscles and my gains are sick does soothe my soul did you have like a fucking flex off with this weird ass bard guy did I miss oh, something? Oh, you missed all of that. <laughs> yeah, so you actually <laughs> missed. Um, we wrestled for dominance, um, and I gave him okay, the people's you, you elbow. Okay, wrestled with Gerald, and and I gave him the people's elbow, and now he is my bitch. Uh, <laughs> cool. Mind you, all not right. the art of the bards. It is beyond your comprehension. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you just. Um, like, yeah, Demi just comes across when she sees that the, a lot of you are kind of like ready and hanging about. And, um, she kind of goes and like sits on the bench next to Jandaro, who's like still playing music. Um, and she kind of looks at the four of you and is like, so are we ready to go? Do we know where we're going? Are we going to pick a direction? I think we're going to Kino? Question mark? Squash just nods his head. We have okay. to find a, 
Nyantir and find my dream that I forgot. What dream? Yeah, we do kind of need to do that part too. We'll do that while we're in Kino. Uh, she puts her hand up like, sorry, what dream? What dream are you looking for? I forgot. Oh, his it. true name got stolen. Okay. Dendar. Okay, Re- that's... that's Real asshole. Okay. Do we Dendar. know that? Which one's Dendar? <gasps> right, yes, Dendar. Dendar nightmare thing. Right, cool. Okay, great. Um, So all of y'all want to be going to Kino... Forge we of... We know where. Forge I've... of Worlds. Forge of the Worlds. Right, I'm sorry. Everything's a little scattered. Um... Yes, somewhere in the waste, and I think I've seen a place, so I might be able to get you as close to it as possible. Yeah, I can do that. I have enough energy for that today. I can totally do that. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay. Um, all right, then. I, I guess we're all just, like, super ready to go. And she kind of puts her stands up and puts her hands out. Uh, and you can see that Jandara kind of, like, stands up as well, and you can see he's actually playing the loot this time. Wait, is, is Jandara coming with us? I don't know. Do you want no. me to come with you? I mean, I'm kind of at odds right now. And no. you see he kind of shrugs. No, no, no. Wait, I thought oh, you were... is... Nope, nope. We're good. We're good. We don't need this. Nope. Sorry. I, Aethod, misunderstood it as if he was going to like grab somebody's hand like, oh, yes, we're doing <laughs> well, the thing. <laughs> okay, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Having a bard with us would be useful, but we don't know what Jendaril's like skill set is. Well, he's a bard. <laughs> I'm trying not to meta saying I don't know what level this motherfucker is. If he's like level five, he's going to die in one hit. It's it's not level five. It's not level five. Right, he's level four. Um, Yeah. (laughs) He's a 3.5 bard. Um, She puts her hands out to like the four of you. Um, She's like, oh, uh... Uh? Right. Uh, I, I'm. I'm sorry. I need to. I need to. I need to give you something. Hang on. Um. And she kind of like rushes back. Um. Back to the barracks. And like half a second late, she's literally just kind of running back. And she kind of like skids to a halt. And she has in her hand something that she was working on um, when Squash woke up. And it's a very tiny like hairband. And it has the blue gem, uh, the blue stone that she had in it. And she hands it out to Squash. Oh. I, I kind of need the other one back. Uh, I, I kind of got busy making things because uh, Kythea told me that sometimes like working with your hands means that like maybe the, my world magic wouldn't do thing and it seems to be working. And I kind of made this, but um, Grimsh doesn't really like wearing hairbands, so um, I thought maybe we could swap. We have yeah. one uh, yeah. if you want. Uh, Squash is going to receive the hairband and give Demi back his old bluestone. And Thanks. he um, just grabs it and like, oh, this is pretty nice. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of was working on it like, um, there's like resin and stuff holding everything in place. And also, like, if you don't have it in a pocket, you can't lose it, I guess. Unless people cut your hair off, in which case that's super not great. But, like, yeah, you should not. Um, anyway, um, and she kind of like puts the stone in her pocket, right? Like, okay, right. We are 100% good to go. You just need to send me a message. We need to get picked up. Probably not today, though, because I haven't slept yet. And I haven't slept since yesterday. And I'm super tired and I don't really have the energy. So maybe not straight away if you need picking up, but like, be reasonable. At least give me some hours um so yes uh kino and she puts her hands out again uh squash grabs one of our hands and grabs whoever's standing next to him to narnia uh <laughs> we're all hugs Ama and is sad and then uh backs up and does the hands joins the circle <laughs> she like, as you cuddle her um, and you know, give her a kiss goodbye or whatever, uh, she, you can feel that, like, as you step into the circle and, and grab someone's hand, like, you can feel her, like, reaching her arms around you and giving you a really big hug. And you feel that she kind of, like, slips something into a black pocket of yours and then just, like, steps away. Um, okay. You hear the bard's music and it is all about this mighty warrior goddess with seriously sick gains and you all get to temporarily gain an inspiration dice, the bardic one. So you can have D10s. Oh. Woo. D10. That is You can hold on to the D10. You can... You can hold on to the D10s until your next uh, whatever role is applicable for. He's not a Valor Bard, so you don't get it on everything. You just get it on the standard uh, Bardic Inspiration stuff. Um, so that's just hold on to it until you need it. Um, it is about some seriously sick gains. Um, <laughs> and uh, Kythea just kind of like gives Lafian a really big hug and says that she will see him soon. Um, big kiss. But she's going back to Kino for a little while. <gasps> yeah, big kisses, kisses, lots of kisses. Um, and she says that she's going back to Kino for a little bit, um, but she will hopefully see you soon. 
Um, and Demi reaches out, grabs your hands, um, and you feel a tug in the back of your navel. As you go transporting and hurling through the stalking, you recognize all of the spectres. All of the spectres that you have seen seem to be clumped together as if they are all resentfully having to be with their charges of most interest, um, being that some of them done fucked up. <laughs> We're all interesting. <laughs> Uh, being that the Spectre's done fucked up uh, and are somewhat being promoted a bit further along the line, um, all of them kind of like wave at you or like give various salutations. Um, you can see that the uh, the kind of Spectre that's assigned to Zoltana and to Demi is also kind of like, they're looking sad and miserable. <laughs> Whereas Zoltana's other <laughs> Spectre is like, fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> just the whole way through as you teleport across the sea, as you find yourself standing in a desert. You've been in deserts before, but this is scorching hot. Even though winter is here, in this part of the world, the sand is still reflective of the heat. And it has gone from bloody cold to effing hot. And you can all begin to feel that, oh crap, we are wearing too much instantly. You look around you and can you can see that the sand just stretches on and on. Off in the distance, you see this kind of tower that's been kind of built into rock and you can see that there are people moving around it just very far off in the distance at least Scorch should be able to see that anyway you can see if you look in completely the other direction very far off in the distance and only Scorch should be able to spot this you can see that at the very edge on the horizon you can see that there is what looks like a break in the ground as if you're looking at a trench there are very few trees around they are very barren they're kind of very very much what you expect to see in a desert. There's tumbleweeds here and there, and there's very little sign of life. Kind of like geckos and lizards and things that only really come out at night. This is where the five of you find yourselves. Okay. Uh, you guys definitely see the tower over there, and over there, and Squash points in the general direction of the crag, and just like, over there, there's like a, there's a split in the desert. I can't really see if it's like a, just a trench or what it is exactly, but there's something over there. Uh, I think we're alone, though. Which is good. All right. Well, first matter of business is we need to find where this forge is. Assumably, and I say this with all hope, assumably it shouldn't be nearby. But I don't see a big um, building that would be a forge. <laughs> Uh, uh, Demi slash Grimch kind of like points off towards where the crack in the earth is and he says as far as I remember it is in the trench itself deep within the earth oh thank you uh, Squash is basically just taking off some of the war warmer clothes uh, they had <laughs> on and is tying yep. his head up, hair up and just like okay okay We'll contact you, Demi, uh, when we're done here. Uh, thank you for your help, as always. We do what we must, even if we despise it. Raw waves. <laughs> Take persuasion, Raw. <roll. laughs> Why, V? <laughs> Because you can't just wave at everyone and make things yes, okay. I you can't can. just wave at a god. What are they going to do, these? You can't just wave at groups the god of, like, survival and strength and slaughter. Oh, my God. Raul is kind of like, like, groups hasn't, like, made a opinion about the dragon boards because they're just kind of this new thing. And Raul waving is like, you know what? Dragon boards, they're cool. I'm into this. <laughs> <laughs> they show See respect. That, wave? That, was, that was great. Basically, yeah, all of Dragonborn opinion rests upon you, my friend. <laughs> well, that's everyone. not good. Oh, it's not going to be. I don't want to make the roll. I'm scared now. <laughs> no pressure. At least I'm not making you make a saving throw. <laughs> <sighs> it was a nine. I'm going to use my bardic inspiration. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> D10. <laughs> all right. I think Aethel just choked on whatever he was, he was drinking. <laughs> In this very visual gag and an audio drama. <laughs> You're a motherfucker, Neil. You're a motherfucker. Fuck me. <laughs> Plus three. Twelve. <laughs> 
Oh, no. Let me just go bring up Grumptious Sheep. Give me a second. I'm so persuasive. <laughs> Rob was not made to be persuasive. We're going to die. <laughs> It'll be fine. From a simple wave? No. No. <laughs> it's Grumpy. He already hates us. Uh, he hates some of you. Um, <laughs> okay, he hates he kind me. Of like, he, he kind of like half waves back at Raoul and looks very confused about what the fuck he's doing. Like, okay, sure, you have some very bizarre <laughs> friends, Demi, sort of feel to it. Um, yeah. He looks uh, He looks down at Zoltana and he says, Odette sends her love. Uh, tell her I love it back. Please. Good luck. And with that, he kind of disappears. I'm just saying, I think Grumsh likes me. He kind of has to, otherwise it's going to be a very, very, very long immortal <laughs> life that, that you're going to share together. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just saying, like, I don't, it doesn't matter why, but, uh, like, chip off shoulder move. He likes me. <laughs> no, hey, dude, listen, you <laughs> make what friends you can. Yeah, he likes me. I love that move. <laughs> it's either that or... I just killed V a little bit. <laughs> oh, my. I'm happy. This is great. <laughs> All right. So you kind of have two things in front of you. You have a tower where there is clearly beings and people moving about and also you have like the trench which is off to the distance off in the horizon what do you want to do what is this tower is this like another is this the library again no this is symphona mm. Sim- it's the very first the, kind of like that was in the desert yep oh, it was shit. on the very edge of the desert hmm. So, yeah, like, um, Symphona is on the very edge of the desert. Um, so, basically, if you look off to one side, very far off in the distance, and only because it's very tall, can everybody see the Tower of Symphona. And if you look off to, like, for example, the other side, you can uh, squash at least can see the crack in the earth, which is where the kind of trench system is in the desert of um, west of Tsiamu. Gotcha. Okay. Um, squash, you have a better understanding of uh, the earth dark than any of us, so... I guess lead the way. Sure. Sorry, I, I. What does that have to do with the Earth Dark? We have to go down into. Grumsh said it. It was in the like under the trenches and. Oh, I thought it was just a trench, like the place. We'll see when we get there. Uh. I'm not. You gonna should always this. heed the words of gods, <laughs> even if they're yeah. kind of pricks. Exactly, exactly yes. what Laffian said. You should always heed the words of gods, gesturing to self. Especially if they're pricks. <laughs> no, that one's about Grumsh. That's not about me. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I think it's a beautiful shot to see everyone kind of bickering about listening to gods as you guys walk towards the trench system. Hello, hope you're all alright there. It's Donna. I want to say thank you to Dagger for recording groups for us. I want to say thank you to Swaz the Sage and to Chris Moss. I appreciate you both very much. They're one of our newer patrons. And I just want to say if you guys want to leave us any messages about what you think they're going to be doing in the desert and how dangerous you think that is, then please just... Drop us a message on any of those social media types. I love reading those. I love seeing how much you guys are enjoying it and sharing your wares and your crafts. It's wonderful. You can find us on Twitter and you can find us on Facebook by looking for the TLD pod, I think it is. And it's exactly the same on Instagram where I post my little my little knitting bits of my grandkids. It's I, I love it very much. So please go ahead and interact with us on there. I also want to talk about this new show called Nectophobia. It's this new horror podcast that I'm kind of really enjoying. Lots of little sto- stories told together, so go ahead and listen to that, and you're about to hear the ad for that right now. Anyway, you wonderful people have a nice couple of weeks, and we'll see you soon. Bye! Nectophobia, a new fiction podcast featuring Asian folk horrors and ghost stories. As Eastern superstitions and Western storytelling converge... New nightmares emerge. Can you tell me what room you are in? I'm... I'm in... I'm in the basement!
basement. Ma'am, ma'am, please repeat that. I'm, oh no. Oh my God, I'm in the basement. Ma'am? My flashlight, oh no, 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 please, 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 don't leave me in the dark, please, please. Remember, keep the lights on. 